ありがとうございます。大家好、我是梁海宁。I so why exploring with technology in today's age? As you know, technology is very pervasive. Everywhere you can see technology. Just look at yourself. Who doesn't have a mobile device in his or her hands in this room? Most of you will have one, right? Technology has changed the past dramatically, and it will change the future in a very, very significant way. Uh, most likely, you, you, you were listening to the talk about the astronomy, uh, you know, the, pro the professor from astronomy. Without technology, it, it will be very difficult to explore astronomy in this way. So, now, having said this, how then we can explore with technology? My answer is actually quite straightforward and quite simple. So let's say you want to study English culture with English-speaking people. Right? So the only way to do this is if you learn English. So the same thing applies to technology. If you want to explore with technology, you have to know how to communicate with technology, or at the very least, know the process through which you can communicate with technology, right? So then the, the, let me explore this further a little bit. Let me, let me borrow this quote from Steve. Steve, before he died, he said this, everyone, that means including you actually, should learn how to program. So why he said this? So when I first read the first part, I kept thinking why this is the case. And so if you read further, he says, because it teaches you how to think. So I said, wow, that's quite interesting. Because I thought I knew how to think. Right? So why is you know, Steve saying this, that we should learn how to program in order to think. So what is the relationship between how to program and how to think? If Steve is saying this, he must have something in mind, I thought to myself. So I explore this further. So what is the relationship between this? And the relationship between this, to a large extent, I think, is what is called computational thinking. Computational thinking it's a set of approaches that you can use. So most of you have done essay write, writing, right? So to do essay writing, you need critical thinking. Computational thinking is similar, but in the context of technology. You apply computational thinking to solve problems. What do I mean by this? Let me explore this further with you. So computational thinking is closely related to problem solving. Uh, it's a set of skills and approaches that you can take to look at a problem and try to find solutions to that particular problem. As a computational thinker, you will need to have a few things. You need to know how to recognize patterns, how to decompose things into smaller chunks, how to do things step by step, how to do logical reasoning, and more importantly, how to analyze problems at different levels, at the macro level and also at the micro level. So let me, let me look at this, uh, one of these in more detail. So decomposition. The idea of decomposition is very important because right now we are facing problems that are bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you're able to break the problem down into smaller chunks, you should and you will be able to understand the problem and solve the problem in a better way. So the other aspect of computational thinking is that it forces you to have a clear way of implementing your solution. And many times, we have a solution to a particular problem, but sometimes we don't know how to implement or make operational the steps that you need to do. So with computational thinking, you will have to have a specific set of steps that you want to follow to solve that particular problem. So let's look at the code again. You know. This is what he said. Everyone in the US, this applies to China, of course, should learn how to program, because it teaches you how to think. So the emphasis here 
is how to program a computer. Actually, you know, I, I, I don't know if you follow the elections in the US. Hillary Clinton, before, uh, when he was campaigning for the presidency, she said that she would allow everyone, foreign students, who, has, who have a degree, with the, uh, who have a technology degree, to go into the US and work and have a green card. So for her, actually, technology-related things are quite important. And those who have an understanding of technology will do well in the US. So if this is the case, if it is so important, why we don't see this more widely spread in schools and society? Uh, one reason could be that many people are not interested in this, which is fine. You know, this is absolutely fine. Um, the other reason might be that is, you know, some people might think it's quite boring and it's quite abstract. This doesn't have to be the case first. And the second thing is, even though something might be abstract or boring, it doesn't mean that it's not useful. Mathematics, for example, for some people, is quite abstract and also quite, you know, to a certain extent, boring. But then why do so many people do mathematics? Same with English, right? Why people do English? For me, actually, uh, I can, I, maybe I can say a little bit of my background. I actually know two and a half languages, Spanish, English, and some Chinese. When I, learned, when I started learning English, for me, English was very, very abstract, and that's quite boring, but I still learned it. And I think that applies to you know, many places, including China. 50 years ago, not many people were into English, but now look at us. We are using English quite a lot in China. So the same thing applies to computational thinking. Uh, now, the other thing, and this is actually what I'm interested in, is the way we teach computational thinking or how to program in schools. It is taught in a very uninteresting and boring manner. And this shouldn't be the case. You know? We can, I think, change that. And me, I, uh, in particular, because I'm an uh, educator, I think we ought to change the way we teach these things to everyone so that it's more accessible and it's more interesting. So one of the things that one can do in class, for example, you know, is to make things more tangible, more, more uh, so to speak, clear and easy to see. If you, I don't know whether you have you know, done some programming, the concept or the idea that people have when they see or think about programming is that someone sitting you know, on a computer and just typing and looking at a lot of text that is not very meaningful. And this is true in many cases when you first start learning programming. And this, is not, this should not be the case. One can, for example, instead of using only text and meaningless text, we can use something that is more visual so that people can see what the code is doing in real time. The other, the, the other approach that one can follow is to provide something that is more tangible, something that people can see and can relate to. So instead of, again, instead of using purely text, one can give tools that are out there. So for example, in one of the classes that I teach, I give Lego robots for students to use and to create. By doing so, students actually can see the designs, and <laughs> many of them become quite attached to, the, to their designs. Many, stu many students came to me saying, I really actually uh, want my robot to work really well. Why? Because I feel like it's my baby. You know? So you know, by doing things in a different way, by providing things that people can relate to, we can make learning much easier. The other way is to encourage collaboration. For example, when I was in high school and university, I liked working with my classmates. And I still do like group work. Even now, I actually enjoy working with my students in different research projects. And so again, rather than making the activity individual, why not allow you know, groups of people to work together, to share the knowledge, to encourage each other, to motivate each other, right? And this can be applied to universities, to high schools, and so on and so forth. Doesn't have to be, learning doesn't have to be individual. It can be based on groups. And the last thing is, you know, learning can be fun too. So one can include different elements to make learning more competitive in a healthy way. So, you know, the, the case of my module, my, my, my course, 
I include certain aspects, certain competitive aspects to encourage students to do well. So in this case, I, uh, so if the students have a good design and an innovative design, I give them extra things, simple things, which can encourage them to do better. And actually, they do better. Many, many groups of students, because of this, they spend hours and hours of their, of, of their own time to try to come up with a solution that is innovative. So now, you know, having said this, how can you learn it? How can you approach it? And how can you, you know, find some kind of appreciation for this? In the same way, you can make it fun. You know, join a competition. You can, for example, find a friend. And let's say, for example, you can challenge each other. If one loses, then the, lose, uh, the person who loses can buy you know, dinner or coffee uh, to their person and vice versa. Sorry, some technical difficulties. This is why you should learn technology. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, OK, OK, OK. There was some delay. Maybe a lot of you are using the network, and it's interfering with, the, you know, with this thing. So you can make it collaborative. You can learn with others. You know? And actually, this is one of the best approaches to learn. And you can find tools that help you learn in a way that is creative, in a way that makes things tangible. So, let me, before I finish with my last thought, so you might be thinking, this guy up there, he wants us to switch our careers or to study computing. Actually, that's not the case. The reason why I came here, specifically here, is to say that you don't have to, because regardless of whichever field you are in, you can use computers, you can use computing, to support your activities. Um, think about this guy, what's his name? Ma Yun, right? Ma Yun, founder of Alibaba. What he did in the past, he used to be an English teacher, right? He did English. Eventually, he got connected, or he got acquainted with technology. And nowadays, you know, he's one of the richest guys in China, right? So the same way, you know, in, the, in the same way, you can, be this, you, know, you can do the same. You can be in economics, you can be in business, you can be in arts. And at the same time, use technology to leverage what you do, to make things better, you know, to explore things that you can do. So this is my last thought. And this is in addition to you know, knowing, uh, being able to think. Knowing how to program will also allow you to do what? To create things. Create what kind of things? Create things that can change the future. Same, uh, this, in the same way that these guys did. Mark from Facebook, Bill Gates from Microsoft. You might know this guy, Jack Nor uh, Dorsey. He's actually uh, the creator of Twitter. Uh, in China, it should be what? Weibo, right? So if you know how to program, you will be able to know how to think in a particular way that is useful. In addition to that, you can create things that can change the future. Thank you for listening. Hopefully, you can explore with technology soon. Yeah. Thank you.